the tree. Uh, 1035 uncrossed lines. We write the integers a and b in the order they're given on two separate uh, horizontal lines. Now we may draw connecting lines uh, a sub i and b sub j such that a sub i is equal to v sub j. The lines we draw do not intersect uh, any other connecting non horizontal line. Note that a connecting uh, note that a connecting lines cannot intersect even at the endpoint. Each number can only belong to one connecting line. We turn the maximum number of connecting lines we can draw in this way. Right, let's take a look. Um, this reminds me of something like um, uh, uh, a biparty uh, maximum biparty matching, uh, which is usually solved through uh, a max fold of sorts, uh, which means finding augmenting path on uh, augmenting path with DFS. Usually, you could do that quickly, but that sounds really high powered for a medium. So uh, let me take a look real quick. Um, I think actually, well, okay. So this is what I just said, but given that the inputs are a's, the length of a and length of b is five hundred. Uh, and that they're less than 2,000, um, you could actually solve this with dynamic programming, I think. So that's probably how uh, I'm going to go about it. Uh, is there an uh, optimization? Let's see. Uh, 500. 500 cube is 125 million, so we have to do slightly better than... Uh, we have to do better than, uh, well, for this is a medium for that. Um, so, but yeah, we have to do better than uh, n cube. Uh, there's a, the, the dynamic programming for n cube is probably trivial, but maybe not. Maybe that's not n cube. Is it n cube? Hmm. But. No, there's a uh, no. There's an n square dynamic programming. The n cube one. I mean, there is an n cube one, but that actually is an n cube. It's just there's an n loop in there that you can optim or like you could do some math to prove that that's not n cube uh, because it doesn't uh, uh, generalize. And okay, I mean it's just dynamic programming problem with the uh, what I would like to call it the. Um, uh, I mean, usually, uh, n square dynamic programming problem refers to some sort of a, a subsequence. Um, sorry, subsequence the right term? Because uh, I feel like everyone uses it a little bit differently. But contiguous uh, subsequence, uh, and that means just like uh, uh, substrings, if you will, of the of the array. Um, but in this case, uh, we're given two arrays, and for each of these. We only care about the suffix uh, of which is O of n length uh, and then the number of matching that's up to that point. Uh, so um, so that's n squared because for each uh, array you can you have a couple of transitions uh, or things you can do, uh, which is that well if if the first number matches, then okay, great. We remove that, we draw a line, uh, and then we go on to the next index. Or we take one of the numbers and then we just chop it off. So we'll go to the next index in A, or or converse with the same B, or conversely, uh, or of A, and then uh, one sub, like chop off the first element of B, uh, and then that should enumerate all the possibilities, uh, and that is obviously the size of A times the size of B, uh, and since you're only doing three um, uh, operations or uh, work per uh, at each of these cells, and the size of A times the size of B cells, this is all of uh, N squared, or N times M, if you want to call it that. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's okay. So let's let's kind of get cranking on it. Uh, so I I would say that innately I'm way better at uh, memorization. Uh, but something that I am trying to be better about is um, is 
bottom-up dynamic programming. So, but I'm not going to do that here because I don't. <laughs> um, though is something that maybe I'll practice a little bit offline. But, uh, so given those, uh, let's just return, uh, let's just say calculate, uh, say, I don't know, what's it? Uh, max lines of a and uh, of zero zero say we could go the other way it in this case it is symmetric so it shouldn't matter um, and it, uh, not all the time is there are other connections symmetric so uh, yeah Uh, okay, so now let's say we have a helper, uh, so now we have an X and a Y, and we also have to uh, create a cache. Um, if you say cache is equal to this thing, uh, if it's Y, let's, let's just set the key to uh, X, Y. Uh, okay, actually, let me, re let me make this more explicit. Uh, I've been doing this. Uh, way to do memorization, which is simpler in Python, but I feel like uh, I want to kind of um, be more explicit in kind of how uh, uh, the space usage, uh, so it's more clear. For okay. And now, uh, if dp of x, y is equal uh, is greater than zero, that means we already did the work. Let's just return it. Otherwise, um, let's set best is equal to zero, um, and we can take off. Uh, well, let's at the end set the dynamic programming to that, and the the cache to that. And then in between, uh, best is equal to, what is our default case? Default case is, well, if, uh, well, let's go through that one by one, right? If a sub x is equal to b sub y, then actually uh, our current score in that case will be uh, max lines of x minus 1 and my, minus 1 plus 1. So let's keep track of that. Uh, so that's your kind of, it's great kind of case. Otherwise, um, you just uh, chop off either one from the, from, the, from the A or one from the B. So let's enumerate both those cases. Um, And then that's mostly it. Uh, but one thing that we did leave out, or I didn't do yet, is the base case. And the base case is, uh, hmm. I mean, maybe this is why I like to do things from zero, because then I could check it, the obvious is a little bit. Okay, let's do that that way. Let's go upwards instead. Uh, so there'll be some slight modifications for the base case. Uh, I mean, it doesn't change anything in terms of the base case. Uh, it's just the inverse of it, but this allows me to be clearer, I think. Um, so x is equal to n. Uh, that means we're done with one side, so the answer is going to be 0, right? Or, conversely, uh, well, not conversely, just also, <laughs> uh, if y is equal to m, uh, that means we're done with the B array, so uh, so we're also returning to zero, and that's I think most of your base case. And I think now we can maybe I'm missing a case, but I think that's it is good enough to uh, run the test to see what's up. Eight, huh? Did I multiply this incorrectly? This is just setting up the arrays. Uh, oh, well, we should check the x and the y first so that we don't go away our bell. Um, 
Right, so that's good. Uh, let's let's just f uh, test the other. Oops, the other uh, examples. Oops, oops. I cannot. They they really need to make the test cases just like easily copy pasteable. Uh, I think that uh, would make things way better. Uh, okay. Because I don't know why I have to like edit the test case that they give us. Cool. Uh, yeah, well, it's a little bit slow because uh, if I could do that in slightly better, I mean, there are ways to um, speed this up for sure for bigger cases. Um, but it, it's still going to be n square or n times m in this case. Uh, the things you can do with kind of like do lookups on like, you know, if there's a 2, you could skip ahead to the next 2 or something like that, right? So there's stuff you can do to kind of make things faster, but uh, and also you could just not do it recursively with a bottom-up dynamic programming, uh, which maybe we could play around with, uh, and something that I'm not as strong with, so I generally don't do it. Um, though in this case, you, uh, as a result, if you do it bottoms up, uh, you can actually uh, uh, optimize the space portion to down to O of N or O of the min of N or M. Uh, but yeah, but I think for dynamic program problem, uh, given that these are just 500s, um, for dynamic program problem, this is probably a little, uh, bit on the easier side. Uh, it's, it's actually, um, now that I think about it a little bit, uh, with the uncrossed lines and all this stuff, this is the same problem as um, given two two strings, find the, um, what's it called, the most, uh, was it common, was it called, uh, uh, longest common substring or something like that, or not substrings, is it substring? But like, contiguous sequence of string or something like that, right, which is a very standard dynamic programming problem. Uh, so definitely, um, uh, I know that a lot of places are kind of getting away from giving dynamic program problems on interviews, uh, but I also heard that like for places like Google or something, yeah, thanks for the yeah longest common subsequence. Uh, but yeah, I've heard also other places like Google and so forth still ask dynamic programming, so definitely something that uh, I would at least get a little familiar with. Um, but yeah, uh, this is n times m in terms for me is in terms of space and time complexity, uh, pretty straightforward. So uh, I mean, for a dynamic program problem, which is you know you could debate it, but uh, but yeah, but yeah, uh, definitely if you're looking for some of the uh, higher level uh, places that if, you, if you're interviewing at a place that. You know, you think are going to give you dynamic program problems, then this is um, give me. But yeah, but yeah, this is a medium. Cool. That's what I have for this.